Hey, what's up, YouTube? I'm back with another radio video. And tonight I am going to install Soft 66 IP SDR dongle. And before I begin, I'm going to say that um, I am only going to install for the local area network usage. I am not going to do the open WebRx portion. That will be on another video in the future. This is only going to be for the local area network setup with this device. So let's let's uh, let's go. Let's move on. Okay. So first thing you're going to notice is this dongle is L, uh, RTL SDR based. So the RTL chipset is in that dongle. So just remember that when you you know you have any trouble uh, uh, troubleshooting it, just remember this is the RTL based SDR. <clears throat> so you're gonna need of course SDR sharp or HD SDR I am gonna use SDR sharper which is basically an enhanced version of SDR sharp and it works fine for me so you can use whatever program you're gonna use that's the one I'm gonna use and I'll show you how to set that up with that program um, you're also gonna need this driver this file this DLL file is the exe I'm gonna put all the links in the description below so everything will be in the description everything will be in the all the downloads will be in the description below <clears throat> you're gonna need this uh, particular driver EXTIO underscore RTO TCP you're gonna download that file um, you're gonna unzip it and you're gonna copy that file and put it in your SDR software folder of your choice. If you use HDSDR, you're going to copy and paste that file and put it in that folder. If you're using SDR Sharp, you're going to put it in that folder. I'm using SDR Sharper, so it's going to, whatever program you're going to use, that's where you're going to put your DLL file. It's this guy right here. EXTIO underscore RTL TCP dot DLL. And that's it. You copy, you download the file, you unzip it, copy, paste, whatever SDR software you're using and that's it for that and before you and then that's the for the for the, the driver now for the hardware itself you got your mini USB that's for your power uh, this does not come with the USB uh, the mini USB cable you have to so you have to get one yourself so um, yeah you can get that for Amazon for like I believe three bucks or whatever uh, I have a whole bunch of them here so I just this is very common <clears throat> so that will go there um, you got your Ethernet and so 100 megabit you're gonna hook that up and the other end you're gonna hook it up to your router and that's how it's gonna communicate with that device and the external USB option that's if you want to hook up another device or like a drive or whatever again uh, well, then I failed to mention I'm gonna mention it now this is actually an Orange Pi computer. It's a small computer with the RTL dongle inside and a converter. So you can, you know, you, you can put a drive on it. You can do whatever. I don't plan to do that, but that's there for that. On the other end, you have your antenna connectors. The, the SMA. This is for your HF for basically 30 megahertz and below. To as for HF for VHF is 30 megahertz and above, and this is your you have a switch here for that, and then you have your RF gain. You can manually set up the RF gain. I recommend you put it at the lowest setting, and then once you have the software running, you tweak it. Um, I put mine at the minimum, so and it's a, you can't see it there, but it's a it's a, like a set screw. It's a Phillips screw. You just put it in there and you turn it to enable the uh, gain. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's that's the... Uh, now again, we're not going to set up the open web RX, so we're going to skip that. Now he recommends you do either SSH or FTP. I don't recommend FTP at all. 
And I'm not even going to get into the reasons why. It's just... It's, it's, it's sim when I show you, it's going to be so simple. It's like, you're going to laugh. It's going to be like, wow. So we're going to do SSH. And we're going to use a, we're going to use a terminal program called Putty. And what you're going to do is you remotely log into the, uh, um, the device. And, and the first thing you're going to need is the IP address of the device before you go, we'll go ahead and do that. <clears throat> Again, well, um, you're going to go into your router and you're going to look up the IP address. It'll be something like, you know, if you go into your router and you'll see like, mine usually says open devices and you'll see it there. And it'll be an address like this and, my, and also the host name of it is going to be, this one was Orange Pi Zero. So I don't know if all of them, are, he named all of them the same host name. But basically, you're going to get the address. Now, your address might be different from this address and so on. So just keep that in mind. But you have to go into your router and find the IP address. So, because you're going to need that to log in using PuTTY to, to the device to set up the, uh, to enable it. And basically, this is the file. You're going to log in with SSH and you're going to edit this file. Um, etc uh, slash etc slash rt rc dot local. And you're going to just uncomment the pound sign on that line. And that's it. And you're going to save the file. And then you're going to reboot the uh, device. So that's just, um, again, you're going to. So. Basically, we're going to let just go through the step real quick. You're going to download the file. See, mine is RSDI Sharper. This is the file. So mine is already in there. You're going to download the file. You're going to save it. And then you're going to copy and paste it into this directly. You need that file. Without that file, it's not going to work. It needs that. It needs the uh, TCP protocol to communicate. <clears throat> so, so what we're going to do first, we're going to log into... Putty. Now my address is this address. This is local address. Um, you can leave the port 22. That's the default for SSH protocol. Do not change that port or you will not go in the... You're going to have a problem. And make sure it's on SSH. And we're going to press... Now again, your IP address is going to be different than the one I have. So keep that in mind. Now we're going to click on open. It's going to prompt for a username. Now, by default, he gives you the username. He, he, when he ships it to you, he wrote, he wrote it on a sticker. It's going to be Soft66IP. That is the username. The password, guess what? It's going to be the same. Of course, you could always change that. And no sense in changing it. And then it's going to log you into the device. This is the... You're inside the... The dongle right now, Orange Pi Zero, and you can see there is uh, welcome to RMBN 5.25 stable Debian Linux, code name Jesse, and you can see right there uptime 58 minutes. I mean, yes, it's been a, a little an hour now that I had this running. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is when it's, we're gonna change directory slash etc slash rc dot local. I'm mean, excuse me, sorry. My bad. ETC. Okay. My bad. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. So now we're in the ETC directory. Um, the local file is is we're in the, we need to be in the directory first. I'm sorry. So ETC directory. Now um, for the local file, the file name is rc.local. Now we need to edit that file. Now the editor that I use for Linux is called Nano. So that's what I'm going to use, Nano. You can use whatever editor you want. There's, oh, there's a few of them. I use Nano because it's the easiest one out of all. So I'm going to type Nano space RC dot local press enter. And then we're now inside the uh, configuration file. Now 
Mine is already uncommented. But when you first go in the file, you're going to see this. Let me move the prompt away. You're going to see that. So all you need to do is remove that um, pound sign. And that line is going to turn white. And you're going to save it. And it's going to enable that command. That um, setup. Okay, and he says here, do not activate both at once. Now, the other the other one is for um, Open Web RX, but we're not going to do any of that. So, we're going to leave everything alone. And again, we're going to uncomment. Because that's what these um, pound signs are for. They're just to, um, they're just comments. Now, we enable it. As you can see, it turned white. Now, we need to save it. Now, in my case, I already saved it. Now, I already saved mine, but um, what you're gonna do is to save it. You're gonna press Control, as you can see here. Let me go right here to this corner. All right here, you see, you see, you got the little carriage sign with the O. That actually stands for Control. So you're gonna press the Control key and O to write out. That's Linux way of saying save. And it's gonna prompt you yes. You're gonna overwrite it yes, and that's it. Now, in my case, since I already saved it, I'm not going to bother doing that again. I'm just going to press Control X. As you can see, Control X is to exit. Uh, say modify buffer. No, I do not want to save it. Okay. And that's it. We're done. And all we need to do now is exit. And that'll close that file. Okay, and now we're done with that portion. And now that we save, we set up the file, and we also, now we can open our SDR Sharper, which I have it open right here. <clears throat> so now that we have the BLO into, in that folder, um, all we need to now, all we need to do now is configure Whatever SDR software you're going to use with the uh, driver and, and tell, tell it the address, the uh, IP address that you got from the router. So this is the driver. So you can see. Um, they Now, since so you can use this one, this one right here, um, I'm not going to use it because this one works fine. They're both the same. These, these two are the same because see RTL, SDR, TCP. RTL, SDR, TCP. So they both work. So I'm going to use, uh, use that one. Leave that one alone. Okay. So that's for me. Now, you know, again, whatever software, depending on what you're running, you might have to use the EX, EXT underscore RTL, SDR, TC, TCP. But for SDR Sharp, SDR Sharper, um, it's working. It works with this one, with this one that I have right here. Now with HDSDR, I believe you have to use the other one. So that that's about it for that. And then before you press this button, you gotta configure it. And that's what you put here. You're gonna put the address here. And as you can see, I already have my address. You put that in there. The port by default is 21234. I will leave that alone. And you can Later on, if you want to set up a, a custom port on that, you can do that. But that's beyond the scope of this video. So I'm not going to show you how to do that. The sample rate, I, I will leave it default. Um, that's fine. I have mine on auto game, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, auto game works fine. And then you're going to click on update settings. Now, when you click on update settings, um, it's not going to do anything. You know, you still got to close it. It's going to update it. But... It does not gonna close it, so you still need to close this. And so you're gonna press update setting and then close it. And that's it. You're all set up. And what you're gonna do now is you're gonna press play. Protocols and procedures. PWC's US leadership and there you go. says that they will have a bigger hand in managing the Oscar scheme, which has been mm -hmm. responsible for the awards balance. So it's working with SDR Sharper. Now the only other thing when you're setting it up with SDR Sharper or SDR Sharp, it's the offset. The offset for this device, well, let me find that. Okay, here it goes. 
is going to be minus 50 million oh yeah minus 50 million or or 50 megahertz um, here I just put 50 minus 50 million and that's going to be the offset to tune this guy now on HD SDR you're going to put the same thing 50 million but without the minus when you're going to configure that way just keep that in mind when you do it HD SDR or SDR sharper or SDR sharp is the offset and that's pretty much it and so you all set up here and that's it that's all it takes and the only issue I have with the um, with the device itself is that it does seem to uh, you gotta have this device in a very low noise environment because it does pick up a lot of noise and like I said I plan to use this in the garage I'm gonna set mine up in the garage with with a dedicated antenna and I'm gonna just leave it in the garage let it run and while I'm I'll be upstairs or whatever uh, anywhere around the house with a laptop and I can listen to this dongle anywhere around the house um, and and that's pretty much it now the only other issue I have with with, with the um, with the device is the documentation um, I would love to recommend this to everybody but I I, I can't do that. I cannot recommend this to the uh, novice user. If I'm going to tell you right now, if you do not know anything about Linux or remote net, uh, just networking, basically look, uh, how to set up, you know, uh, anything about any any networking or Linux command, this device is not for you. You're going to have a. I mean, I hope the video helps, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's not for the faith of heart. It's not for you know. Yeah, it's not it's not as easy as uh, I hate to say that pun. It's not as easy as pie. <laughs> so just keep that in mind that although he on his um eBay page he says that basically you just gotta have PC a little PC knowledge. Um, I think going from PC knowledge to being a, a experience in Linux is a big spectrum. So I'm gonna tell you right now if you don't know anything about Linux, um, I was I would kind of like. You know, you know, it might be intimidating. You know, you, you see all this stuff like edit RT, FTP login. If you don't know FTP protocol, SSH protocol, you're gonna have a hard time. And that's why I made this video because a few people are having problems with this setting up this SDR. And me, I, it was pretty, you know, painless. But then again, I've been doing, I've been using Linux for over 25 years. <laughs> you know, I was a webmaster. I ran websites based on Linux. So that's why for me Linux is not a big deal. So I hope this video helps. And if you enjoyed this video, if you, if you found it useful, please like. Also subscribe to my channel for you know, regular updates. And just let me know what you think about it. This is my first time using the... Um, OBS software and writing and making this tutorial. So I, you know, it's new to me. It's like I said, YouTube is very new to me to all this. You know, I'm learning as I go. And um, anyway, I just want to thank my subscribers. I went over the 200 subscriber mark. So I want to thank every single subscriber. And without you guys, I wouldn't even have the the motivation to even do these videos. Um, you know, sometimes I want to just take a break. <laughs> I've only been doing this for six months. But, you know, when I see someone having trouble with this device, I say, you know what, I have to make a video on this. And maybe hopefully that'll help the next person not go through that agony and learning curve to set up a device like this. So anyway, thank you for watching. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.